Hello everyone. We are back in the studio and I told you we we're going to do something different this week. So we're going to paint an abstract on this 30 by 40. This is, um, I've got it the length way, so it's 40 tall, 30 wide. And I always get the canvases with the inch and a half thick. And I try to paint it around the edges. Um, and then I fix it so we can hang it. And I usually, when I'm doing an abstract, I like to make some marks. And it's just so that I really get familiar with the size of the canvas. Cause you know, I really like to paint small. So when I convert and do something bigger, it takes me a little while to really uh, hone in and get there. So without any further ado, um, I think I'm gonna put music on. That always makes me feel, I don't know, it's, it's more of an emotional with my colors and it's just really um, trying to bring the inside out. And as we're at the beginning of a new year, I'm feeling good. So let's get it on this canvas. So I'm gonna start by making some marks and I use um, a wax pencil. You can use whatever you want. Sometimes I use charcoal, but today, yes, I'm using acrylic um, paint, but that's okay. Um, I'm okay with seeing the marks come through. I think it's gonna be part of my composition actually. So let's get started. Let me cut on the music. So a little bit of jazz in the background. It's a variety of, it's a playlist. It's just a, uh, on my Sonos. So anyway, let's make some marks. So what I'm doing is I am going to go from the bottom up and I want to build a strong base and my color palette are going to be pinks, a little orange, some blues, a little yellow, and then I'm going to bring in some metallic golds, I think. So I have just used up my, I tend to get my, um, the Urban Artist uh, Soho acrylic white because I use it so much. Um, this is the titanium white and I just finished this one up. And then I have for this middle um, value, I'm using Amsterdam and this is um, number 363. And then this is my favorite paint of all, um, but it's quite pricey, Charmin. Um, and this is Julia pink so it's like a peach I got that and then I need a little bit of an accent and so I went back to my Soho and I got uh, Rose Matter um, so let's get started when I'm painting um, on a canvas I like to use a bigger brush this is a 14 and it's Rosemary it's some of my it's my favorite brush company um, and I like to just get those big strokes, get them on in there. Um, so here we go. Hopefully you can see. Hopefully you can see that. So you can see that, um, it's the blue is actually coming through, but I'm okay with that. Um, as I said before, I knew that it was very possible because it was oil. For those of you who've um, studied color, you know that the hot colors like red, pink, and orange are where your eye's gonna go. 
So you have to be careful when you're utilizing these colors. So I already know that the eye is going to come here. So I'm going to have to do something to get the eye to go up. And I think I have a plan, maybe. Um, these lines that are shining through are definitely going to help. Um, which is good. I just dabbed my brush into the water so that there could be some dripping possibly. Um, the other thing you want to watch out for is you don't want a lot of hard lines. You want some soft lines in there. You want to make sure that you're being equally distributing them amongst them and blending. All right, so I've added in a another Soho color, Cadium Orange, and a Charvin color, Cadmium Yellow. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to build my hot colors up. Um, I usually don't spend this much time thinking about a piece, but this one, it just, I don't know what it was during the holidays. I think it was wrapping paper or something where I saw these colors and I loved how they like built on each other. Um, and I thought, you know what? That would be a beautiful painting. So we'll see. Can she actually pull it off? That is the question. The feel, the wispy fun feel that was in the visual that I felt when I saw the paint, the, the paper. Okay, let's get this. I do try to do the edges when I'm doing the, the painting because that ensures that it's all part of the piece, that there was intention when I did it. So this almost looks like, if you're looking at this piece, it almost looks like Something's pouring out and it's falling and it's getting darker and darker or it's coming out of the ground and it's just exploding up, which was kind of the, the feeling that I wanted the viewer to get. It's a party. It's celebration. It's happy.
All right, this down here is a little too tight for me. It's a little too straight. So I gotta figure out how to integrate it a little better. Oh, I love how that kind of blows up a little bit. All right, so I got a water bottle and I sprayed the bottom because I didn't like how it was just so tight. So this makes me feel a little bit better. It's loosening up the paint a little bit. It's running. I love how it's um, bleeding in. Okay, so I've cleaned off my brush and I've introduced some uh, blues. The first one is the Amsterdam brand and this is 530, which is also uh, Severe's blue. <laughs> I don't know. And then this other color that's also Amsterdam, it's 551, it's sky blue. So what I'm gonna do is I think over on the right, I'm gonna introduce some blue in there. And it's okay if it blends, cause you know, I might get some violet out of it. But I wanna, I think it's important at this aspect, see I've picked up some uh, yellow somewhere. Um, at this point, I want to make sure that <clears throat> my colors blend nicely together. And you see the brush strokes. I think that is what makes a painting really cool. Is to really see the brush strokes and how the colors blend together. Like I love how you can um, can you see that? Let's see. I'll show you up close in a minute um, how this is. You know, it's almost transparent, which is really super cool, actually. And because we've got light down here, I'm going to add some of this darker blue. I don't want to mess up my drips. So I'm just going to add a little bit for now and come back to it, maybe. Um, when the drips are dry. I think I'm also going to work on maybe some blue up here. Spread the love. This blue's got a touch of yellow in it. I must not have cleaned my brush as well as I thought I did. <clears throat> now I will tell you that down here when the dries, when this dries, I am gonna introduce a lime green. That'll be my other cool color. It's so important to finish off the edges as much as you did the painting because those are gonna show just as much as the stuff on the front, if it's not framed. So take your time and do your edges. And again, I'm gonna add a little bit of dark in here. You can see the lights over here. I probably need to get a little more light yellow 
but I'm gonna get some dark up here at the top to balance out this dark down here. It's also important when you're creating a piece to make sure that you turn it all over the place because you're gonna have a different vibe, a different feeling. Um, you're gonna see things differently by flipping it around. I'm picking up another brush because I really want to get while I'm looking at it. A little bit of the lighter yellow, which is actually brighter than the darker color. It's also enabling me to soften some of these lines as they feed into each other. This right here is bothering me, so I need to figure out how in the world it can feed in, still feel it. Oh, it could be angel's wings going through. That's what I just thought of when I saw this, the white. It's important when you're painting and you're trying not to have hard edges and you're blending colors together, pay attention to how they feed into each other. You want it to be, not necessarily to make sense, but you want it to be interesting. Either it needs to be transparent or it needs to be intentional. So here we are, guys. This is where we are up close. I like how the color goes, the yellow goes into the blue here. And I love the lines that shine through. Um, I might do a little more of the wispy white. And... I am loving this right here. I absolutely love that. And it's fun that the blue, when I turned it, I didn't realize it was running. So it's coming this way. So it's important, as I said before, make sure you turn your canvas as you go. Cause you can get some really different points of view and different feelings. So I'm letting it dry for a minute and then I'm going to turn it and we're going to get going again. Oh, I wanted to show you my edge. Yeah, so the edge, super important that we cover the edge beautifully. You might ask, what in the world do you do while you're waiting for it to, uh, to dry? Well, I got a fan on it right now. And I am in ordering some supplies for next year. Right now, I'm in Jerry's. Uh, they got a huge uh, paint sale right now. So that's what I'm doing while I'm waiting for it to dry. All right. <clears throat> so 
I've turned it, turned it, and turned it, and I've decided I need some white. I need a lot of white. So I'm gonna go now, and I'm just gonna add <clears throat> a lot of white. I got a different type of white. This one has a little more body to it because I really wanted it to be thick. And yes, you got to paint the white on the sides because you would be able to tell if you didn't. Um, this canvas has just been gessoed, not white paint. But I really wanted a lot of negative space. So I decided I needed to get my white on before I did anything more. So I can sit back and see what I think about it. I got a harder brush too. I went and got this one. This is a Esabe Special. Esabe Special, I don't know. It's a size 12. It's not as big as I'd like for it to be, but I'm finding that a lot of my big brushes here at this studio are soft, and I really needed something hard. Something that can really move around and be a little tough with. So this is the part of the painting where, you know, I told you you get your inside out, so I was really enjoying the flow of building the hot colors and then softening a little bit with the cool colors. But when I looked down, I was like, whoa, we need some, we need some white mm. to lighten it up a little bit. So, um, that's what's beautiful when you're doing a painting is to sit back, don't be in a rush, just look and see what is it that you are doing? What does it look like to somebody else who's looking at it? Um, does it make sense? Does it feel good? What do you see? Does the viewer want to go back and look at things? Um, I learned a lot of this when I started showing and selling my art on um, a platform, an international platform. Um, they make you put all these different views and talk about it. And um, I really realized that when you do this, um, people will explore your painting more uh, because they want to know what were you thinking when you were doing this or what was the mood or what were you trying to accomplish? Okay, so I've got some white here. I've got some white there. I know that I really want, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, y'all. Okay, so I know that I went and got some green and this green is from Charvin, and it's the Green of Province. I love it. And I want to get some green down here without messing up these beautiful little runs. I just want to get a little bit of green in here. It can be dark and light, but I know I just wanted some green. I love, 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 love the complementary color of red and green or pink and green. I think I just painted this stuff on both edges. And I may use my spray bottle to sort of get, because this is heavy body. The Charvin is heavy, heavy body paint. So it's super hard to get it to do its thing. 
So as a viewer, are you looking at this painting wondering, hmm, does she not think that some of those lines compete with what's happening um, with these light lines? And I'm hoping that they tell the story, the same story. It's just a, a different narrative. I'm hoping that they do come together a little bit better um, as I develop it. Okay, so I'm digging this. Ugh. I'm hung up, y'all. Digging this. Green. All right, let's see what that does. And then I think, I think I'm gonna have to go back to <clears throat> where I've added some of the white over the pink. I think we're gonna have to go back and let them play nice together right now they're not playing very nice they're competing and it's always nice to um, to blend your colors on the palette so here I blended the yellow with some of this peach which looks a lot like that, which is quite nice. So I know I brought white down here. But I'm thinking, remember when I told you that as the viewer, your eye is going to go straight. I think the eye right now is going straight and then it's dropping. So I've somehow got to get it to come up. Um, so there's got to be some drama that connects this down here, which is very strong, to something that's going to be up there. So I'm going to sit back and think about that, and then I'll come back with a suggestion maybe. All right. <clears throat> I did a little bit without you guys. I forgot to hit the button to start. But remember I told you I was gonna put some gold in there. So I've actually gone in with some metallic gold. It's it's translucent, but it's also a heavy body. And while it's wet, I've put that in. So what I'm gonna do now is <clears throat> let this dry. And once the edges are dry, cause I did this edge right here, just right there where I did that. Um, I should add the peach for that. As soon as this is dry, I'm going to turn it and I'll come back and we can evaluate. But I think I'm going to do white right here. Huge, thick white. I think I'm going to do more white here. And up here, I think I'm going to do white. And then I'm going to stand back and see what is the vibe it's giving? Where does the eye go? What's the feeling? Is there enough interest? I will tell you, right here, this translucency that's building, I love that. I also love this, you know, the spidery look effect. All right, so I've turned it around, y'all, and I like it better. If you remember the beginning of the video, the top was at the bottom, and this was at the top. But as I told you, you got to be so careful where the eye goes. And so your eye is going to start there if you close your eyes. And yes, it's going to travel up a little bit, but your eye wants to get down here because it shoots off. So what I've got to do is make sure there's interest here and there that the viewer wants to go in and look. 
And <clears throat> if you look up close, like right there, I want to get a little cloud feeling in there. Almost um, just peaceful, but yet exciting, a party. All right, so I will see you guys after this is all good and dry, and we'll add on the final touches. There she goes. I'm done. I added the gold up here just a little bit to unify it. And that's nice and white. And I think, I think I'm gonna sign it. I'm gonna sign the edge so that you can hang it this way. Or, or you can hang it this way, horizontal. And by signing it on the edge, that enables the person to hang it whichever way they want. So join me next Wednesday for another fun um, hour in the studio. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and do a thumbs up. See you next week.